Some people will not teach for a long time. They will come here and stay up. <laughs> how, many, how many angry people are in the house? <laughs> because you get angry, does that make you... Amen, 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 amen. That was an advanced topic. Why did you bring all of this, all this violent, <laughs> all these violent topics? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I was thinking, you know, it's vengeance too. When you get angry, you get vengeful and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Amen. All right. Uh, Dickens, you want to please pray for us, man. Open prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 We began a topic last week, uh, and we're going to conclude this week by the grace of God. Uh, the topic was, uh, Sister Ari, vengeance, vengeance, and what were some of the definitions of vengeance? Vengeance. Brother Toby, vengeance. What, do you, what comes to your mind when you think vengeance? An eye for an eye. They go low, we go lower. We'll match them. You know, anger. Um, sorry, vengeance. <laughs> of course, where you, you have to be angry to be vengeful, right? All right. So, um, in our lesson text, uh, can we project it again? Uh, especially, let's, let's read, it, read through it. Our lesson text was from Romans 12, verse 14 to 21. Romans 12, verse 14. 14 through 21. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. How many of us are doing this? Be happy with those who are happy. This is very easy, right? This is very easy. And weep with those who weep. This is very easy too. 16. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Huh? That's looted. There are some people, they don't, yeah, they're class. They're very classy. And don't think you know it all. Yes, that could be for some of us. Yes. Verse 17, never pay back evil. I like this one. You know, never pay back evil with more evil. <laughs> That's it. We go lower. That's it. We, we go lower thing. Don't go lower. <laughs> but is it okay to even do toe to toe? <laughs> to give them dollar for dollar. We'll match you. You know, never go, never pay back evil with more evil. You know, people say, well, my payback is going to be looted. You know, I'll, go, I'll get you in a way that, you know, you would regret making the first move. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are an honorable man. You're supposed to get angry, but you walked away. You are supposed to be vengeful. Other people would have done this and that, but not you. Verse 18, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Verse 19, dear friends, never, never, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. This is you know, the lesson in summary. Dear friends, never take revenge. Don't avenge yourself. Leave it to the Lord. Leave it to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, vengeance is mine. I will 
take vengeance. All right, let's go to verse 20 and 21. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Like we said, not poison. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Uh, and this is if they are reasonable people, right? And last verse. <laughs> Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. When you get in the mud and you fight with a pig, what does that make you? A pig. The playmate of a pig. So when you go toe for toe, you know, you have just become that person. The Lord will help us. So um, we talked about the causes of anger. And I think where we got stuck, we're going to start from there. So we're going to read that Bible passage. First Kings, uh, First Kings chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. So we talked about the causes of anger. Number one was failure to forgive. When someone offends you, you know how many times, but I did it there, offends me. <laughs> and I keep forgiving like Jesus says. 70 times, seven times, I've forgiven him. Yeah, I'm not, mm -mm. I'm above this topic. Jesus commands us to love our enemies. You know, people who are vengeful, People are vengeful when they try to avenge a perceived wrong. And that's a very big one. Now, let's read that Bible passage. People are vengeful because they are not letting go of the past. They are not letting go of the past. Uh, Second King, First Kings chapter 2, verse 5. And there is something else. So this is David talking to his son. You know what Joab, son of Zeruiah, yeah, son of Z did to me <laughs> when he murdered two of my army commanders, Abner son of Ner and Amasa son of Jetta. He pretended that it was an act of war, but it was done in a time of peace, staining his belts and sandals with innocent blood. This person did something that was wrong. Yes. Now, next verse. Thank you. Do with him what you think best. But don't let him grow old to go to his grave in peace. <laughs> Do with him what you think is best, but make sure he does not go to his grave in peace. What is that? All right. Exactly. And now, this is because of what he did to me, your father. This man has offended me, your father. and I'm leaving him to you. You know what to do. Next verse. So he's reporting several people. Be kind to the sons of Basilia, the sons of B, of Gilead. Make them permanent guests at your table, for they took care of me when I fled from your brother Absalom. This is the second person. Be kind to this one. This one did me good. Verse 8, the third person now. And remember, Shimei. Son of Gera, the man from Bo, the man from B in Benjamin. He cursed me with a terrible curse as I was fleeing to M. When he came down to meet me at the Jordan River, I swore by the Lord, I have sworn an oath that I will not take vengeance. I will not kill him. I swore to the Lord that I will not kill him. Now, verse 9, but that hoax does not make him innocent. You are a wise man, and you will know how to arrange, arrange something. <laughs> Deal with him decisively. Now, now and I, don't, I, I know we talk, spent a lot of time talking about this last week, and I understand where Pastor Buki was coming from. But this varies slightly from what she was saying. This, when you sit a child down and you tell him all of this, this can't be good. Nothing good can come from this. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, telling him 
Don't let that man die in peace. I mean, yeah. I mean, there is, be careful with certain people. You know, the, what Pastor Buki was saying. These people, they are known to be treasurers. You know, they deceived your father. His father is, and his, his father before his father was also very treasurers. Be careful dealing with these people. Those are, you know, good advice. But this one is very loaded. It's, it's, it's just winding your son for... For vengeance, something that you cannot do. You know, you can't do it, but you want your son to do it. You want, you know, do we see this sometimes when people are inciting us against some people who have offended them? Oh, that person is a bad person. Don't go near them. Don't talk to them. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do you, do you get that sometimes? You know, this is very bad. Let's be careful that we're not setting up other people for failure. Now, this man started looking for the way to deal with this man because his father had given him an assignment. And it didn't matter what the other guy would do. The other guy would still do wrong. Even if he has repented. Even if he has repented. So not letting go of the past. If someone offends you and you can't find it in your heart to forgive the person, then you transfer it to your son or to your daughter. Yeah, that's... That's deep. And then you, you know, what if, I mean, in that time, the man was king. Whatever he did was, he can get away with it. What if your son is not a king? And your son goes out and kills this man because his father told him to. Guess what? Your son is going to spend the rest of his life in jail. Just because, God, God forgive, God forgive, God forbid, amen, their son. Now... <laughs> Now he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail because he was avenging his father. We need to be careful. We need to be careful what we tell children. Another example we're giving, people who don't forget the past. You know, the, the head of John the Baptist, when that daughter danced very well, and they asked her, what do you want? She went and consulted with her mother, right? And her mother told her what to ask for. Why did the mother tell her that? Why? Because of what? Her former husband. Yes. Yeah, the John the Baptist had taught her that. Ah. Because John the Baptist had, uh, had told her that she shouldn't have married her current exactly. husband because of her former husband, this, this, this. And she took that to heart. So yep. she really took him to heart, yep. you know? So, of course. Later yeah. on, she got the opportunity to revenge. So when she left her former husband to marry the king, John the Baptist was against it. John the Baptist said, King, it is not okay for you to take the wife of another man. So that woman was upset with John the Baptist. And from that day, she has been looking for a way to get at him. And when the opportunity presented itself, she asked for the head of John the Baptist. How many of us are like that? Somebody has offended us. <laughs> you know what he's talking about? We thought, because we have not dealt with it, and we are still planning. Or sometimes we're not even planning, we're not thinking, but when the opportunity presents itself, uh-huh, uh-huh, now God catch you, you are in my corner. They ask me to ask whatever I want. I want your head. And when they cut the head of John the Baptist, what did she do with it? Of what he used, was it? So let's be careful when we, the things we want. You know, some people will say, I want, I want that man's job. I want this to cost him his job. So you are asking, you, because of what, something that he did, you went and spoke to the boss. Fire him. Vengeance, right? He insulted me. You know, you know, some people say, I'll deal with you, especially where we come from. I'll show you. I'll call your boss's boss. I'll make sure you lose your job. Just because you did. You know, you know, there, 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 in some certain places, there are protocols. Just because you are a gate man or you're an usher and you told somebody to please don't, you can't pass here. You can't sit here. Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are? And just because you did your job, and then they, they call your boss's boss to make sure that you are fired. And those ones would have no choice but to fire you. Let's be careful that we're not acting like the wife of Herod. 
So outline number B, we, outline B, we, we're talking about solutions. What are the solutions? Uh, number one, God does not want his children to avenge themselves. Romans 12, 19. Romans 12, 19. He says, do not avenge yourself. Dear friends, never take revenge. So God does not want his children to avenge themselves. Learn to leave judgments to God. Hebrews 10, 30. We must learn to leave judgment to God. Hebrews 10, 30. For we know the one who said, I will take vengeance. I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. So, solutions. Just know that is a command. You must not avenge yourself. You must leave all vengeance to God. Third thing you need to know is that God is a better judge. And God is not limited, but you are. God is a better judge. God is not limited, but you are. So I heard a story, uh, I think, two weeks ago now. So there was a story of this man who was in a position someone came to tell him that you see this position that you occupy today there is a man who wanted to occupy that position too and that man did everything including bribing us to deny you this position so that he can get there and that man is still there you know it's still a threat to you and the man said oh really and it's because he's still going about and you never know who he can talk to that can make this happen. They might fire you and put him in your place. So the man felt, of course, threatened. And then he started plotting the downfall of this man because he was in a position, right? So he did all within his power to get rid of that man because of what was told to him. He felt that that man was a threat indeed. And of course, he got rid of that man. Well, first of all, when the man got to know that he, he was trying to get rid of him because all of a sudden they were just, he was just being, you know when somebody is vilifying you and you know I haven't done anything. What have I done to deserve this from my boss? And then someone came and told you because of something, something, and then he went to confront the boss and said, I heard that someone told you that I was trying to take your position, but this is not the case. I, and in all honesty, and he tried to plead his case and then, but the boss said, okay, I understand. And the boss said, you may go. But the boss still went ahead and fired him. Now, the boss left that position and went on to become a king. You know, he became a king, a well-established king later in life, right? And eventually, the king, in an unceremonial, un not unprecedented, but in an unceremonial way, Within the, it was within like a period of days, he was dethroned. Dethroned. Now, when you begin to trace it back, he had taken vengeance on a man who really didn't hurt him. The man didn't do any wrong. It was a perceived wrong. Someone lied against the man. So this is, the, the point of the story is this. When you take vengeance, you, you don't even, you, sometimes you may be wrong. You may be moving against someone who has not done any wrong. And when you do something like that, of course, that man will cry to God, right? And God will move against you. So let's be careful. We don't see all of the picture. So this is one of the reasons why we just let go and let God. You know, give all vengeance to God because you take, you know, you, you avenge yourself. He thought he had avenged himself, right, by removing a man from a position. But he became a king. To be removed from, to be fired from a job, he can get another job, right? It's not as, it's not as bad, right? It's not as it's not as bad if you are fired from a job. To be, de to be dethroned as a king is like the height of all insults. It's the height of all insults. So when you think you have done something to someone, 
God will do even much more. So let's be careful how we take vengeance. Because sometimes we may not even know the true story. We may not even know the person you thought was disrespecting you. It may just be that you perceived it that way. The person didn't mean any disrespect. The person was just trying to... Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, I was just going to say that... Uh... You see, vengeful people, I don't necessarily believe they want God's intervention. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it com- sometimes it's out of pride. How dare you? How dare you? Uh-huh. Yes. So it's not as if they're really interested in that God settling the matter. They're just trying to let you know, you know, that they yes. are above, they are superior. Because when you look at the case of Herodias that you have said, she, didn't want, she, she wasn't looking for God's intervention. She just <laughs> wanted to show that. John the Baptist that, okay, you are a prophet, and I will let you know. So she waited for that time. If, if she was sincere, then you, the next will be to pray to God. That God, oh, let them see the truth. Let them know the truth. So I think people that are asking God to intervene, they are people with good hearts. If you look at it very well, maybe they are Christians. Yeah. But people out there, some, people, some of these people, they don't, really necess- they, they don't believe in God. They just, they just vengeful, they bitter, they, yes. they, you know, they are just there. Yes. So people, will feel, yeah, people will feel like they are well connected. Don't worry, I'll deal with this myself. I don't need to report you to God. I, I, I know your boss's boss. Me and them play golf together. <laughs> you know, they will make a call. Uh, you know, people, people of this world, basically. Thank you, sir, for that. So, as children of God, God is a better judge. You know, he, he, he can read the situation better. Leave it to God and let God deal with the situation. They gave us the example in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 1 to 23, when Herod began arresting the disciples and was putting them in prison. And he killed one of them. And he was going to kill Peter. And the church was praying. And then that same Herod, he made a mistake one day, you know, and God moved against him. And God knocked him down. And he died. to say this. You see, again, sometimes uh, like you rightly said, we as humans, we don't see the entire picture. And so sometimes we are even uh, rightfully attacking certain people, but it's because of a wrong motivation that they're doing what they're doing. And, and, and in a case, I know of somebody who was working in a place and the impression they had given the boss about that person was complete opposite of who that person was. And the boss came with that attitude against that person and was literally oppressing that person until God opened his eye to see what these people told me about this person is wrong. And then he began to overlove that person that the people who now primed the person against this person were now on the receiving end. So sometimes when people come at us a certain way, as children of God, we need to step back and let God say, God, what's going on here? Because it could be that somebody has fed them wrong information mm-hmm. about you. They have primed them against you, and they are just victims. As well, You are a victim. They are also a victim. So, so when you now start attacking such people, it's, it's pointless. Because you need to go back to God and say, like David, shall I pursue? <laughs> yes. Will I overtake? Yes. Will I recover? Yes. So that we don't just fight battles that are needless. That's a very good point, you know, like, like you said, uh, like David. You know, uh, I was listening to a message during the week, and it was exactly on that. I said, do you know that uh, um, David didn't have to ask that question? As a man of war, I mean, your, you know, your town was raided. Your people were taken. Many of us, it's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> it's a no-brainer. You, you, yeah, where did they go? Which way did they go? No, no brain, but... Even in that situation, David still prayed, should I pursue? Should I? So in, in instances where it seems like it's a, it's a no-brainer, they slap you, you slap back. You know? <laughs> you know, or they did this, you do that back. You still need to ask God. Yes, can I say something? Yes, ma'am. That happened to me. That was my boss. He dealt with me. <laughs> as in, he, I, I didn't do anything for him. He keeps me in the office till 10 o'clock. I was pregnant. My husband was in Lagos. But later, he just, it was war. And I was praying against him. Mm-hmm. Because I have to pray against him. He wanted me to, wanted, we were doing our prayers that he wrote with pencil. He was going to change, write something. <laughs> so I made him to 
to change to pen that I'm not going to sign. It was a war. And I actually prayed against him. I reported him to my mom. I reported him to my mother-in-law. But later he came back and begged. See, tomorrow, we call him Big Daddy. Tomorrow is his birthday. He prophesied I will give it on his birthday, 26. Every day, that is why we have to be careful what we say. Every day he says it in the morning, in the, in the office, that I'm going to name the boy David. I'm going to give out to my boy. He's going to be a boy on the 26th when, wow. he, re when he reconciled with me. Uh, Fortunately, I gave out on the 25th. He was 27. <laughs> so we just have to, we need However, God. My dad was going to send the name. I wanted to name my son Daniel. My father in law sent David. <laughs> so that was why he won. And then my mother gave him Adedayo. His name is David Adedayo. Oh, wow. You understand me? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that we really need the Spirit of God to help us because what he did to me was very bad. I, I couldn't go for my antenata. If hospital, we have to come to my to the bank to take my blood sample. They will wow. send somebody to come very early to take my blood sample for my test. You can see wow. the extent of what he did to me. So what do I do to somebody that was treating me that way? Praise the Lord. God will help all of us Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God will help us indeed. When it comes to these topics that we are treating, uh, th this morning, for those of us who came late, uh, we talked about uh, anger. And now we're talking about vengeance. God will help us with these topics. Um, one other solution is to pray for the spirit of forgiveness. Because despite all, we need to be like Christ. We need to be like Christ. You know, when they nailed Jesus to the cross, the one thing he said was uh, for the people, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. So we need to be like Jesus. So even when people are persecuting us, Stepping on our last nerve, we still need to pray for them. <laughs> and Stephen, too, did the same thing. So, you know, it's not just Jesus. You can do it. You must have, and the Bible says in Philippians 2, 5 to 8, you must have the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus. You must have the same attitude that was in Christ Jesus. So, these are the solutions to anger, uh, to vengeance. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, solutions to vengeance, very good. But um, it depends, okay. you know, your disposition at that time. We, yes, as Christians, we tend to know these things. They are written down. Mm. We hear them. But um, the truth is, at that point, <laughs> at that point, Boiling point, the decision you make, is very, very crucial. Yes. And I'll put it this way. Okay, somebody does something to you, it offends you. Yes, like the Bible says, before you go into any war, you have to watch, you have to look at what you have, your asna, <laughs> against the other person's asna. <laughs> now, can I deal with the person? That person cannot handle myself. Okay, the enemy is greater than me. Let me go back to God. <laughs> is the person greater than me? Let me go back to God. Is it somebody I can fight? <laughs> like they tell us in the military, you don't use a platoon to fight a platoon. Mm -hmm. You use a greater force to fight a lesser force. So the question now is, he offended me. How can I get back to him? That is the vengeance I'm talking about. Okay, ah, this person is too connected though. Let me take you to God. I just I will not go back to God. <laughs> but if it's somebody I can deal with, yeah. I will deal with him and say, that is the reward of the wicked. Yeah. We'll not use scripture and back it up. I say, that is the reward of the <laughs> wicked. <laughs> Touch not my anointed and do my prophet's word, no harm. Uh, and he has so, the anointed. that is what the Bible says, commit your ways, mm. not some ways, all ways unto the Lord. Yes. And he will what? Trust in him. And you bring it to come to pass. So, as Christians, let us always pause. Mm. Let's pause. Evaluate. This person cannot get to him. I will not get to him. What does the Bible say? Is it revenge? Is it vengeance? Is, what is the Holy Spirit saying? From there. So, let's acting spontaneously most times gets us into trouble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. You are very correct. You know, it's the spontaneity for us. You know, somebody... 
stepped on you. You know, the, just the spontaneous reaction is just to step back. You know, somebody slap you. Just, you know, you're, you don't even think about it. You just slap back, yeah. you know. I remember when I was much younger. So I had a disagreement with my boss. I must have been about 26 years old then. And my boss said, okay, he sent me to go and buy something on behalf of the office. For whatever reason, he didn't trust me. <laughs> so he said, let's go to the place to buy together. And when we got there, for instance, the person had told me 16. But when we came with him, the person told him 18. I mean, I kept quiet. So he bought it, and we got back to the office. Then he was trying to justify that I tried to cheat him. And then he brought the receipt out, and saw that what I told him before was cheaper than what he bought it. And then he was angry at me that, why didn't you tell me? I said, Oga, I went, I came back with a uh, profile invoice. You say you don't trust me. We went there, they told you higher. So what am I supposed to do? So but I kept quiet and let him buy it at the higher price. <laughs> and so he was angry, and he said, Far, you are suspended. Mm. And you know, it's like a switch turned in my head. <laughs> and I took my ID card, I brought scissors in front of my empty, <laughs> I cut it, and I say, suspend what? I, I, I'm I leaving. I quit. And just to be sure that I'm not coming back, I cut the ID card, and I dropped it in an envelope and put it on the table, and I walked away. <laughs> what am I saying? Two years. Uh, wow. Two complete years. Wow. After I did that thing, I suffered. Yeah. <laughs> and when I mean I suffered, I went for test of at uh, um, Akitola Williams Deloitte. I went on recommendation of the managing partner, Mr. Hammond, at the time. I did the exam. By God's grace, I led the exam. Mr. Hammond thought I was working in PWC, in Akitola Williams already. The Da Silvas that connected me to him, I went to their house for Christmas some time later, and they were asking me, so how is Deloitte? I said, which Deloitte? They never got back to me. Say, no. Mr. Hammond particularly told us that you led, and that, oh, that guy is, I said, really? <laughs> Except I get the letter tomorrow. <laughs> I went for several other interviews in that season that I, it was obvious that I was going to be tough. But God dealt with me. So this uncontrolled anger, hey, it can cost you, this spontaneous anger, rather, it can cost you a lot. I, I mean, I'm just saying this for those who are younger, that some things will come at you at your job. <laughs> Don't think I have skills, I am good, I'm excellent, and do just damn everybody. You are held by a different standard by God. You should know better. I'm telling this story, I don't know who it will bless, but when you talk spontaneity, it dropped in my head. For two good years, my life was on standstill. I mean standstill. So please, be guided. Amen. Amen. And you know, sharing those stories, and I think it's a way to relate it to our contemporary lives. You know, and I think I've shared it before. Um, it was at work, and uh, I'd made a mistake. And I thought it was a very, you know, it's, we're all human. We can make, anyone can make this mistake. And one of the bosses decided to amplify it to the executive director. And it became a thing. And at the end of the day, I was like, well, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a mundane thing. It's, you know, like, but this person was carrying it on the head. Like, so even the, the executive director was like, calm down. It's not. <laughs> so, yeah, so at the end of the day, even though I was, even though I was justified in there, like, anybody can make this mistake. But the, fact, the way he took it and then, and I was so upset in my spirit, and I prayed, like, I actually prayed against him. I prayed that he will make, that that man will make an embarrassing mistake. <laughs> he will make an embarrassing mistake. He will embarrass himself. And guess what? Guess who made the mistake again? <laughs> I made another one. Immediate, the next week. Oh, and it was at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that point I realized I was praying against myself. I was like, oh, okay, okay, God, please, 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 please forgive him. So, hey, God does not want to pray. 
do not, he said, do not love your enemies. Pray for them that persecute you. That's what he says. So when we go against the grain, God has a way of teaching us lesson. So for me, I say, ah, see, I know scripture. Why am I acting this way? Pray for them who persecute you. Leave all judgment to me, God says. So this is one of the things why you should not avenge. Number one, it is God's command. Thou shall not avenge yourself. And number two is because God's vengeance could be more than yours. If you decide to take vengeance on your own, God says, go ahead, go ahead and do it. You, you got this, right? You got this. Okay, go ahead, go and do it. And God forbid that that person is like, but uh, Pius said, that person is more connected than you are. <laughs> you know, you know there's some people that you offend them, they offend you and then you went and report them because you want to get them fired. And then the person you went to report them to is their friend. <laughs> And as you are leaving the place, they are calling that person, say, and then you, by the time you get to your office, your sack letter is already waiting for you <laughs> because you are fighting somebody who's bigger than you. So leave it to God. Let God deal with it for you. And, you know, you, God will deal with it in more ways. Sorry. Uh, now, they gave us here the example of Uriah. When Uriah, yes, I'm going to get to you. When Uriah, uh, when David killed the wife of Uriah, uh, he took the wife of Uriah. What could Uriah have done? I mean, um, Uriah, if, if he knew that David was going to take his wife, what could he have done? And he went ahead and to the point that he killed Uriah. And he did all of that. It was like nobody was watching. Nobody could stop. But God took vengeance on behalf of Uriah. Uriah didn't have to do it. He was already dead. But God took vengeance. So God will definitely avenge you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So I just want to... Um, give an example also in the Bible, the case of the Amalekites. You know, when the children of Israel were passing through, they wanted to pass through their land just to pass through, nothing else. But they did not allow them to pass through. Even when they were pass, even when they were past another place, they were, they were, they were attacking those that were lagging behind. If you read the Bible, they were attacking those that were lagging behind and they were killing them and all that. But God did not say anything. But when God was about to pass through them, He said, "Come, told Saul." completely wipe yeah, out the Amalekites, yes, completely. And I'm like, okay, when I read that, I was like, okay, where is the Amalekites now, these yeah. days, where is it? It is nowhere in exactly. the world, not nowhere in the map of the world, nothing called Amalekites. People might say that Fabian is somewhere around here or around here. You can imagine, <laughs> wipe them completely, completely out of the world. Completely. So I think it's good yes. to just leave everything for God. To yes, judge. leave everything to God. You know, the vengeance of God is more than yours. You know, that's why I said, feed your enemy when they are hungry. And he said, it will be like heaping coals on their head. Um, your refusal to avenge yourself make you better than others. You know, like we said, if you fight dirty with a pig, it makes you a pig also. But if you decide not to fight a pig, you still re retain yourself. You, are, you know, the person is a pig and you're a human. So please, let's not go down some, some ally, yeah, some gutters. Let's not go into the gutters with some people. Let's maintain. And this is how they would know that we are Christians, right? And last point says, your good can change others. You know, when people have done you wrong, and you're, everyone around is expecting you to react, but you didn't. I'm sure some of them from that day will begin to notice. These are some of the reasons why we say, you know, people no longer read the Bible, but they read you. And if you are the one who have been preaching to everybody in the office, telling them about Jesus, and this day came where you could have, you could have lived that Jesus, and somebody did something and you fled up, they slapped you on one side of the face, and you went with both hands, <laughs> and you slapped the person, you turned them upside down, and you beat the, and everybody say, yeah, yeah, you know. But after a while, they say, wait, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I to the one, I to the guy preaching to us last week. I to the one saying, so, uh, of course, at the moment, it seemed, yeah, yeah, you gave it to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you have the scripture to back it up. Yes. So, the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, um, vengeance, vengeance, we're not to take vengeance. If someone has Yes. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Talking about slap. <laughs> let me uh, let me flash back. When I finished from um, military school, so we used to wear like soldiers. We would dress up in uniform. We had units where we walk. So I was living with my sister somewhere in the cartoon, and I was working in VI. So normally we'll come, we'll take a bus. This is what they call this um, Fergam or something. It's a, it's a long bus, contain about, uh, no, not very. It, it contains about 25, 20 people, five, five, five into four. That's 22. So at that time, I was still a young Christian. I used to do bus evangelism. So I struggled for some time before I started preaching in the bus. So that I was cladded in my uniform, mm -hmm. shone my boots on a Monday morning. And Mondays, we have parade. <laughs> That they will inspect you. <laughs> so if you are dirty, they will give you punishment duty. So my boots were properly shown. I was behind and I preached. Very fine message. I had time <laughs> to preach. So on coming down from the bus, one of the passengers just stepped on my boots. <laughs> oh God. On a Monday morning, 7 30. Oh boy, like fire. Wow. <laughs> Spontaneous. <laughs> Is after I slapped the person <laughs> that you realize I, I now say, ah, preacher. <laughs> no, everybody was shocked <laughs> that this is a guy was, that was preached and they were saying, and then, and so two people even get their life to Christ in the bus. <laughs> no, after that slap, bah. They collect the scale now, this the scale now for that say, hey, preacher, just snap person. <laughs> no, and I didn't want to look weak to God so I apologize to the person. I just walked away. <laughs> But the Holy Spirit convicted me. I repented. So, and it kind of gave me patience to know. Because though it was so, I, I spent hours shining boots. Some of you also come and mash my boots on the Monday morning. Well, so that, you know, so it's, um, it's, you know. know. So, yeah, yeah. you know, everybody, you no, know, the, the message had to just scatter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, see, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for that wonderful testimony. And this is the, I think that's the summary of it all. Our actions, our actions, let it not be, let it not contradict the word that we preach. You know, we're telling people about Jesus, but are we leaving Jesus? Are we leaving Jesus for them to see? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us. We have seen ourselves in the mirror of your word. Help us, Lord, to make necessary adjustments. Father, we pray for the grace to leave all matters unto you so that you can avenge us. Father, we pray against the spirit of hunger. Daddy, we pray that you will deal with it decisively in our lives, even to the roots in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to live like you, to do what you will do, to act in ways that you would act. We receive that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, we pray that our life will not be in contradiction with the word. Our life will line up with the word. Thank you, precious Father. Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen.